Um, my name is Mario Novelli. I'm a professor in the political economy of education at the University of Sussex, a centre for international education, and the author of a new uh, rigorous literature review on the political economy of education in conflict affected contexts. Um, I think there's been an increased interest in political economy, in development more generally, um, as a recognition that development programs are not uh, uh, necessarily achieving their full potential, not because of the technical failures of policy uh, and programming, but actually because policies and programs interact with local communities, national and international factors that change the patterns of that uh, of those processes. So I think that uh, what's uh, been happening recently is an increased interest in trying to analyse some of those political economy factors that affect policy making. I think the second area that's important in terms of uh, the focus of our research is an increasing interest in conflict affected contexts. You'll see that um, most of the major international donors have increased markedly over the last decade the amount of money that they invest in development processes in conflict affected contexts and it's those contexts that are perhaps some of the most challenging and really good political economy analysis is really important for policy success. The area of focus is the political economy of education in conflict affected contexts. There is a lot of research in political economy, in development more generally. There is a lot of research on political economy in conflict affected contexts, but there is much less literature on the political economy of education in conflict affected contexts. So what we tried to do was synthesize insights that had educational insights from a range of different bodies of literature as well as a smaller body uh, of literature that actually is focused on political economy of education in conflict affected contexts. Certainly there is much more to do in this field. In our study, we, we followed a very systematic process of uh, searching databases across both academic and uh, donor agency uh, institutions to try to gather both academic articles and also grey literature from policy documents, etc. And eventually we narrowed this down to 281 studies uh, and then set a range of criteria in terms of the robustness of that literature, the quality of that literature and its relevance for the study and eventually we narrowed down to 69 studies which we sub su subjected to a very in-depth rigorous analysis um, and I think that from those studies I'm confident that yeah at least we have we're asking the right questions now I think there are, there are clear issues and discrepancies between what is going on in terms of education policy making in developing countries in conflict affected contexts and what needs to be done uh, particularly to promote peace building so yes I think that the evidence is is it's not completely uh, robust but we're moving in the right direction So I guess the, the core interest that we had in the report was to see the uh, role of education in promoting peace building in these conflict affected contexts and I think the first finding that we had was that the global security and peace building agenda often marginalizes education. Now what I mean by the global uh, security and peace building agenda is that the UN peace building uh, support office, a range of different uh, international actors that are primarily concerned with promoting peace building in developing contexts, in conflict affected contexts, often see security, democracy and the promotion of markets as their primary objectives and they see often education and health for that matter as something that can perhaps come later and this disjuncture has meant that there is not adequate focus on education in many of these uh, projects that uh, the UN and other development agencies are supporting and I think there's now a recognition that more needs to be done. Uh, the second uh, major point is that there is a disconnect between peace building and conflict practitioners and education specialists. They often come from very different training 
very different worldviews. Often your conflict and peace building uh, specialists come from a kind of international relations background. Uh, educators often are not trained and well versed in issues around peace building and conflict. And so there is a kind of mismatch between these two skills and I think that uh, the need is there to bring these two communities much more together. Um, now, more generally, I think what you find in, in the literature is a disconnect between actors in the humanitarian, the development and the security sectors. So you've got three kind of different communities that are working in the same context but with very different agendas and these agendas often don't gel well together and often undermine the potential uh, of uh, education to fulfill its potential as a peace building role. So I think the first three major points there were really looking at the kind of agenda setting uh, phase of, uh, of this process. The second phase I think is about policy formulation and what we found there was that there was a kind of disjunction between a global education agenda that seems to be rolled out in all development uh, contexts and the particular peace building needs of conflict affected societies and so policy was almost generic decentralization a range of other policies which while they might work in some contexts they may actually inflame uh, situations in other contexts, particularly in conflict affected contexts. So I think that we recognize there there was an issue about the danger of developing generic models for development and the need for a conflict sensitive political economy analysis to tailor those. Um, and I think that you know that's uh, evident with the way that some of the framing of educational interventions in terms, in very narrow education terms, fails to understand cultural, particular cultural, social, economic, political uh, priorities and preferences of different environments. One of the other uh, things that we, we discovered was that within countries, within national boundaries, there was a lack of cross-sector collaboration between uh, the education ministry and other sectors, which often undermine the potential of education to contribute to peace building goals in different sectors. Um, and that again, there was an inattention to local agency, local voices, and I think that part of this is, a, is, is, is the reality that there are a range of different imbalances of power between different actors in this environment, from global aid agencies to local actors, national governments. And I think if you're thinking about conflict-affected contexts, you're talking about countries that are recovering from war. Often they have lack of capacity, they have challenges in terms of infrastructure, and it's precisely there where they can become very dependent. And their interests and voices can get smothered by other people's interests and voices. Um, you know, you have a case of in several developing countries that are recovering from conflict where over half of the education budget is provided by outside sources, which I think threatens the independence and autonomy of many of these uh, um, policies. Um, there is also, I think, uh, um, something that's more specific to the literature is that there is a growing recognition that political economy research in education is important, but there is a kind of presumption that political economy is somehow a kind of neutral undertaking. But actually, political economy is underpinned by a range of different ideological preferences. And what we noted in the report was a wide range of different approaches to political economy, which would if you like, uncover different aspects. So more critical political economy that comes from dependency theory, other critical theories in development, uh, is much more likely to focus on international factors and actors. They n see the locus of the problem in the international community and unequal global relations. Political economy research that comes from more orthodox approaches often sees problems beginning and ending inside the country itself.
So, for example, the problem of uh, education in Sierra Leone is a problem of Sierra Leoneans and the Sierra Leonean government and people. And they often fail to understand the role of international actors, not only aid agencies, international actors, but also multinational corporations, mining companies, etc. And their links to these processes. So I think that what we really discovered in the report was the importance of understanding the underpinning philosophy of many of these political economy approaches. There isn't just one generic approach. Um, and then I guess the final one, which for policymakers uh, is probably a trying one, is that Political economy analysis complexifies issues. It makes them actually more complicated. It challenges many of these things, which for a policymaker it makes things difficult because maybe there are many things that policymakers can't change. Um, but my feeling is, is that even if they can't change them, they should be able to understand the complexity of these issues, the range of actors that are involved, so that at least they can attempt to make better policy that fits the local and national context. So I think that yeah, those were the main insights that we took from the report. I think that the first uh, problem of, uh, of this area is that there is a lack of country level systematic research on the political economy of education in conflict contexts. Um, and I think that these uh, processes are not just one-off reports but actually something that need to be continually done and done again because circumstances change. But having a good sensitive understanding of the relationship between education and the political economy of particular contexts can really uh, support um, policy making. Um, I think the, the other research gap uh, is that I think that, that where there is a body of literature on the political economy of education it often stops in its analysis at the national level and doesn't look at the interaction between global actors and national actors and local actors. And I think that there should be much more interaction. I mean, I talked about this before, that there's kind of two bodies of literature, one that sees all problems emanating from outside of the country in the global economy, and another body of literature that really focuses in on uh, inside the borders that it's national issues and those are and national factors and I think that what we need is more research that tries to combine those two and understand the complex kind of interlinkages between local, national and global uh, areas. And then I guess the third one which is more of a practical policy issue is if we recognize the difficulty of changing some of these political economy factors precisely because often they're quite structural, um, they're very much rooted in societies, is the question of then what research might be done to help policymakers to better manoeuvre their education activities in order to deliver the best results for local communities, for national governments, and to hopefully promote peace building.